Welcome back to the Business Launch Podcast. I'm your host, Kimberly Ann Jimenez. And if you have ever ghosted your audience and had no idea what to say to get back to posting, you're gonna love this episode because I'm gonna walk you through exactly what to say and more importantly, what not to say when it comes to creating a comeback strategy to start or get back in the game when it comes to your social media, your blog, your podcast, your video, etc. It's going to be so good. And I'm going to give you a big, big, big alert. Just so you know, this episode is a little spicy on the truth bomb department, which means I'm going to tell it like it is with a lot of love for your benefit. So I'm going to show you how to avoid what I commonly see, the mistake that most people make, which I call the shame sandwich. It's got three layers and none of them are cute. And that's why I call it that. We're going to make sure you're not part of that group. And I'm going to show you exactly what to do to get back in the game. Let's get into it. All right, familia, I hope that you're having an amazing summer, by the way. It's been a crazy time in the business the last six months, but we are finally getting to a place where we're settled. Things are rocking and rolling. Our team is uh, just putting out some really cool stuff. And I'm so excited to just bring you along for the journey. We've been doing this content series the past couple of weeks. We asked you guys through, if you're subscribed to our email, which if you're not, what are you doing? We asked you guys to tell us what is your number one challenge when it comes to content creation and you guys is delivered with a ton of questions, a lot of feedback. And if you want to take part of that poll, definitely check out the description box below. There's going to be a link there. We would love to answer one of your questions. And one of the questions that I got a lot was, what do I do if I ghosted my audience? If I have not been posting consistently, what do I say to come back? And so it can definitely be a little bit weird or intimidating to figure out what to say when you have taken a break, but I want you to not worry too much about it. You know, we of course want to stay as consistent as we can, but life does happen. So whether you intentionally took a break from social media, like I often do to recharge and disconnect or you know, your business and life got a little bit hectic or you straight up have like no good reason to be ghosting your audience. Um, I've done it, no judgment here. You know exactly what to do and say by the end of this episode. And so I just wanna give you the good news that it is not the end of the world to not be posting on social media. Of course, we wanna make sure that, especially in the beginning part, when you're building an audience and you're hustling and you're trying to get attention for your business, that you stay as consistent as possible. But most of you guys listening to this podcast are solopreneurs like I once was, like Chris once was, right? We started from zero. It was just a team of one in the beginning. And so it can be a lot to keep up with multiple social media platforms, also deliver a product, develop content, um, put up a marketing strategy, deal with the books and all the business things that often come as a part of launching your own thing. So it's okay. It's not the end of the world. What we want to do is we want to course correct and we want to do it in a really, really easy way. So let's get started with what not to say when it comes to getting back in the swing of things with social media. And it's really interesting because I often see entrepreneurs, creators, small business owners make this really big mistake. The first time they get back to posting after they've taken a break for whatever reason, they post the shame sandwich and I have done it. So there is no, even though it's called a shame sandwich, I'm not trying to judge you. I'm trying to course correct you. And what's really interesting is it, it goes in three parts. Number one, they apologize and they'll say something like, oh my God, guys, I'm so sorry for being away for so long. I feel totally awful, you know, X, Y, or Z. And then the second part is they give their audience a million excuses says, right? So they'll go in and say, I've just been so totally swamped with a million things. The kids are out of school. My manager quit. I had a million orders to ship out, yada, 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 right? Whatever that excuse might be. And then number three, this is the third part of the shame sandwich. They'll say, I'm going to promise to do better, right? I'm back now. I have so many things to share with you guys. And I promise that I'm going to do better. You guys totally deserve it. I am so, so sorry. And the reality is um, with the three layers of the shame sandwich is that oftentimes it's so well-intentioned yet it's misplaced shame 
and guilt. And I know that I'm gonna get pushback on this. I get it, I understand, because most people are conditioned to over apologize in our society, over explain things. Um, and oftentimes it comes from a coping mechanism. I've done it. I know that we've all been conditioned to do it. But the reality is when it comes down to it, you should not apologize. And here is why. I know, I know, I don't. That sounds like the natural thing to do. But if you're reading this, chances are, or you know, listening or watching, whatever you're doing right now, chances are that you're an entrepreneur, you're busy, you're an a business owner, you have, a, you maybe you're a creator and you're producing content and you're likely not an influencer, right? Oftentimes, because the market is dominated by influencers, we tend to model exactly what they're doing. And so as an entrepreneur, you add the highest value to the world by creating incredible products, programs, and services. You're solving a specific problem for the market. That's how you add value. Whereas an influencer adds value through content and relationship, right? Their content is their product. The relationship in terms of consistency is what ensures that they get paid from brand sponsorships or affiliate promotions or a combination of that, maybe some merch. For the most part, the influencer type of model is completely opposite to the business model. And so even though there's a lot of places where they interconnect, you cannot be acting like an influencer when you are an entrepreneur or a business owner. And so I know that there's people that like don't know how to make this difference and I totally understand why. So I wanted to clarify that because I think it's so important important. Again, your product, program, and service, that's your highest value. It's not your content. Okay. So you add the highest value in the world through the problem that you solve, not through the, the content that you're producing. And I know that I love and teach content creation all the time. And so you might be wondering, like, why am I even saying that it's not your content creation is not your highest value? Because I like to see, and I think this is the healthiest way of seeing it. Um, I think it's the purest way of really looking at content is that it's your marketing vehicle, right? It's the way that you use, uh, it's the tool really that you use to offer incredibly generous content, right? In the form of uh, maybe a blog or a podcast or videos, or maybe it's social media and you're building relationships with your audience. You're garnering their attention. You're moving them through a sales process and you're attracting that ideal buyer. You don't have to create content, okay? It is important, but it's not absolutely necessary. And I know some people are gonna be like, how dare you, how dare you? It's fine. You know, if you've never built a business before social media was a thing, then you're likely going to feel that way. But we have, and the reality is that there's tons of businesses right now that operate fully offline. They're doing great. Like they're not struggling um, to find clients and customers. And sometimes I feel like we've been conditioned so much to think that it's content, you know, the content hamster wheel, it's production or bust. It's like, if you don't put out content constantly, you will never get clients. And of course, content is the fastest way of attracting leads and sales because online gives you access to your ridiculously large marketplace. But business was alive and well, small business was alive and well before online marketing came along, social media marketing came along. And so we have to understand this as entrepreneurs and really absorb the idea or understand the idea that you are not a content creation machine. You're not, you have a business and you serve people through your paid programs, products, or services. That's exactly, you know, what you should be doing. And so the minute that you apologize, you're treating your followers who consume your content for free, like their customers. And that's a big no, no. You're essentially telling them that you are providing a free service and you're equaling it to a paid one. That's what influencers do right? That's their game. Their product is their content in many, many ways. And so it's not that you are not apologizing because you don't care about them or you don't want to foster the relationship. It's the exact opposite because in their minds, when you apologize, it creates an unhealthy expectation of the type of relationship that you have with them and what they're going to receive in return for following you. It actually starts making them feel like that's how they do business with you 
and that is not the case. So content is a wonderful marketing tool, but it isn't and should never be elevated to the same status as your paid products and programs. It should never be that way. So you know how the saying goes that you teach people how to treat you. This is exactly what you're doing. When you apologize for not producing content consistently, you inadvertently shift the perception of your brand and your audience's minds. And that creates a loose, loose scenario where you actually set the expectation that you are providing them with this commercial level service through your content and you're not, right? So this is a content trap most content creators fall into, whether again, that's your business model or you're an entrepreneur who is also a content creator. But that's a content conundrum for another day. We will talk about that in more detail over on the blog since we released um, a new content conundrum series. But I know at this point you're going to be like, I don't know about that. I don't know about that. I don't know that I think that, you know, you might still feel like apologizing is the right thing to do. And that's okay. You know, you can try it. I'm just letting you know from coaching hundreds of people online, thousands of people through our courses, through our products and through our coaching practice. It happens time and time and again. And even I, I've done this many times. And even I, when I'm actually like, I follow influencers or I follow content creators and they've been off their game for a while and they come back and they just apologize and make a million excuses and promise to do better. The minute I read it, I'm like, why are you apologizing? Like, it's fine. Like, we love you. Like, you put out like 300 videos. Like, it's okay. Like, wh what? You're already doing so much and then you're apologizing for not doing enough. It's just kind of like, mm, does it, it just, it changes again that relationship and I think it's totally unnecessary. The reason number two, so we talked about not giving people a million excuses and um, I know this is gonna be a little intense. I'm, I'm gonna ruffle some feathers potentially with this one, but I hope that you hear like, the reason I want you to hear the truth is because I would rather you be upset with me and I actually give you something to think about that might evade or avoid some kind of issue in the future for you, avoid the mistakes that I have made, than to sugarcoat things for you and then just kind of like applaud you into, uh, you know, a lot of pain and suffering. I, I, I don't think that's cool. So I'm going to tell you the truth instead and hopefully it comes across with a lot of love because I think sometimes we got to be challenged. Sometimes we just got to be stretched. Sometimes we just got to hear it like it is. So I don't want you to give your audience a million excuses. And I have done this again many times and every time I do, it feels super icky. The truth is it really is not of their business why you are not consistent. It just isn't. I said what I said. It's the truth. And I know that um, a lot of you are going to think this sounds hard, but it's, it's okay. We're all adults here. And it's true. At the end of the day, when you give people a million excuses for why you didn't provide them with something that they weren't even paying for in the first place, it makes you look pretty unprofessional. Kind of like when you miss a deadline at work. Like, have you ever, have you ever done that? If you have a nine to five still, I've done that. And I miss a deadline at work, gave my boss a million excuses why I didn't uh, actually hit that deadline instead of just owning it. Instead of just owning it and saying like, hey, I should have, you know, hit this deadline. I'm going to do better. That's really what your audience wants. In the, at the, at the end of the day, they don't want the million excuses. They don't want to hear, you know, all the different reasons and the drama for what led you to this point. They just want to hear from you again. They just want you to get back in the game and provide them with something really valuable. And I think sometimes it's weird and hard for us as entrepreneurs because we tend to be conditioned to work for someone else, right? And we kind of go against the grain. There's something in us that is different as small business owners, as entrepreneurs, we are like, you know, we don't conform to society in many ways. And so regardless, a lot of us come from corporate or working nine to fives, and we are used to having a boss that we answer to, that we give, you know, uh, accounts to. And oftentimes, or there we're accountable to, oftentimes when we don't have a boss, right now we're in the business space, we make our audience our boss. Why do we do that? Isn't that funny? Like if I 
psychoanalyze that a little bit. I'm like, yeah, we do that. We totally do that. Like we, we feel like we have to give accounts, like the concept of total and complete freedom because you're an entrepreneur, which is what we're working towards, right? It's the fact that like we don't fit in a box and we don't want to fit in a box and we want to be able to do what we want to do. We want to be able to serve people. We want to be able to do it with a lot of integrity, but we want freedom. We want to be able to spend our time how we want to spend our time and uh, use our time wisely and invest it in our family and our friends and build generational wealth. At least that's one of my goals and, and have financial freedom, all the things that come with entrepreneurship, the rewards for the insane sacrifice that is to start a business. And so I think that it's interesting to just think about that for a second. Like, do we ever really escape that corporate conditioning of answering to somebody? And why do we make that boss our audience? I don't know. Just maybe it's just me. Maybe it's just me, something to think about. <laughs> but the reality is um, I know that you love your people. I love my people. I love my audience. I love the people that listen to this podcast, that watch our YouTube videos, that read our blog. I love having deep relationships with them. I know so many of you guys uh, by first name, you've been following for years and years and years. Um, I love reading your DMs or your emails or your chats on the website. But I think that, that that's really, the more you love your people, that's all the more reason to want a healthy relationship with them. One that really just empowers you through uh, your content to leverage that relationship in, in a positive way where you're giving them a lot of value. They're receiving a lot of value and there's just no need to over dramatize. There's no need to like change things and say things that you might regret in the future because the reality is people just want to hear from you, right? They just want to hear from you. So third one, don't promise to do better. Don't promise to do better. Why? <laughs> I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you just like one more dose of tough love. Okay. Just one more. The reason that you don't want to promise that you're going to do better is because no one cares. No one cares. <laughs> That's the reality. Instead of going on and on and on about what you intend to do, just do it, right? Nike style. It's the classic game of show and don't tell. Show that you show your audience that you actually care about them by producing content that they care about. It's not about doing more. It's not about making extra promises that you might not be able to keep. It's about quietly owning it and then just moving forward, just creating something that they will love, just continuing to build and foster relationships. It's about answering their questions. It's about creating that relationship and making sure that you're doing that uh, as consistently as humanly possible, right? We're all humans, especially in the beginning stage. I want you to give yourself a little bit of grace. If you're a one person show, which the majority of you are, you don't have a team. You don't have a lot of resources. Maybe you're raising little ones. Maybe you have a full-time job. Maybe you're providing for your family and you work late hours. Maybe you have more than one job. You know, the, the amount of hustle that I see here, it's, it's, it's incredible. And I really respect it. You're doing all those things. It's inevitable that something will happen in your life that will derail your content. And it's really truly about empowering you to come back to it with a great strategy instead of having you post a shame sandwich over and over again, right? You might just just like post a shame sandwich, then be consistent for a couple weeks, fall off the train, feel terrible for a couple other weeks, not know how to get back to it. So now you're spending even more time away from your audience, posting the shame sandwich yet again, and the cycle continues. I want to pull you out of that. I want to pull you out of that and help you to figure out exactly what to say to just course correct and get back in the game. So what should you say when you get back to posting on social media after you've taken a break? At this point, I just want to say good job because you have handled some truth bombs really well. And now we're going to get into the good part. So what should you say? I hope that you are ready for it because it's very profound and it's something that I have spent years perfecting. And it's it's really this one secret that you're, you're going to want to write down. You are going to say absolutely nothing. You're going to say nothing. I know. <laughs> I know what you're thinking. You're like, are you freaking kidding me, Kim? You made me like go through this whole thing just to tell me that you should not, I should not post anything or I shouldn't say anything about the fact that I've been away. And that's the reality. You should not post anything. I just want you to slide back in the feed and pretend like nothing happened. Like you're just going to open up your Instagram and you're going to start posting stories. 
you're just going to get back on YouTube with a new video and you're not even gonna address the fact that you've been away for six months. Now, of course, use prudence. This is my perspective. Do what you wanna do, okay? You are a professional, you're an adult, you can do what you wanna do. If you wanna post a shame sandwich seven times this year, go for it. But in my opinion, in my professional opinion, after doing this for 10 years, I would not post anything. I literally would not post anything. I do this all the time. And if you've been in my community, you've seen that. Just slide back in with some great value and deliver on what you want to produce in a way that is super relatable to your people. Instead of beating yourself up, feeling extremely guilty, getting back in that shame sandwich cycle, why don't you just get back to creating content and make your first post back a really good one. Now, this is not to put extra pressure on yourself because I know some of you, what you're gonna do is you're gonna be like obsessing over making the, the post perfect because you feel guilty, like your first post back, perfect, because you feel guilty because you've been away for a while. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Don't do that either. Just get back in the game, right? It's better to put something out that is, you know, published over it being perfect and staying on drafts forever, collecting cyber dust. So at the end of the day, really, um, I wanted to give you some ideas for some icebreakers that you could consider when you are thinking about what your first post back should be. Again, comeback strategy does not need to be complicated. It's just about getting started. And I know this sounds crazy. It sounds so freaking simple and ridiculously easy, but most of us stay stuck. We stay stuck in the shame sandwich of not like creating content consistently or not getting back in the game because we feel guilty because we didn't post last week or the week before. You know what I'm saying? So we're not gonna do that. We're not gonna do that from today on. We're gonna move forward and we're gonna move forward strategically. So here are a couple ideas for your first post back. You could answer a question that you get asked a lot or answer a question that you have seen other people post on maybe your competitor's social media or a Facebook group that you're part of or the YouTube comments. Do a little bit of research, you know? Build yourself a good uh, questions bank so that you can easily answer a question straight to the point not complicated, right? The next one is you can bust a myth in your industry. Um, what's something that people maybe believe that isn't accurate? Super simple. Ask for feedback on a project um, or a secret product that you've been working on. And by the way, this is a fantastic way if you have been working on something to kind of explain things without explaining things. Just be like, guys, I have been so busy working on this secret product or this secret project. It is so freaking cool and it's almost here. What do you think we should have? Um, what color do you think the packaging should be? Or what do you think about logo one versus logo two? Or um, would you want it to be a course or would you want it to be uh, a boot camp? Would you want it to be a DVD that's shipped out to you or would you want the instant download? Do you know what I'm saying? Bring them into the journey of whatever you're working on instead of posting this like super awkward moment where you're like apologizing profusely for something that again, they're not even paying for. So I, I know I've repeated that one a lot, but I'm just gonna keep hammering that point home. Oh man, okay, the next one. You can post about a personal struggle that maybe you've overcome. You could share three tips about it. You could celebrate a win or a, a milestone or some kind of goal. Uh, as simple as like posting a photo on social media or if it's a podcast or YouTube that you've been ghosting, I'll talk about that. You could also recommend like your favorite books, your favorite, you know, blogs or podcasts related to your industry. Um, you could also repurpose some of your content. This is one of my favorite strategies. We will pull a training from the business lounge and post it on the podcast if for some reason, you know, I haven't had the chance to record new content. Or you could pull like a blog from the archive and send that to your email list. Like it does not have to be, um, you know, something you overthink. The next one is to uh, poll your audience, ask them for ideas, um, have them pick from, you know, different options for your upcoming series or for maybe like what you, what they want you to post about on LinkedIn or on Facebook. This is a really cool way of bringing people into the content process. So they're giving you a lot of ideas. So you could post a simple poll, have a few different topics and ask them what they would like to hear um, from you next. I think that's fantastic. 
The next one is you can uh, reply to like a question. It's, this one's really good for service providers. If you get a question, that, like you got a question recently from a client or a customer, you can answer it in a video reel, or you can answer it on a Facebook video, or you could answer it, you know, on TikTok, whatever platform that you're using, even on Twitter, easily screenshot that question and then reply like give the answer to that question. Chances are a lot of other people in your audience might also be wondering, you know, what the answer to that question is. So that one's one of my favorites. I use it all the time. And then finally, you can ask your audience a question, like get, start the conversation, right? Like just be like, Hey guys, what about this? So, Hey guys, what book should I read next? Or Hey guys, what TV series are you really enjoying recently? Or like, Hey guys, I'm looking for a new Netflix show. What should I watch? Um, or, um, I've been exploring these tools like related to your subject matter. Um, have you tried any of these? Do you have another tool that you recommend? You know, something simple. So those are, more than five ideas. I think I gave you like 10 ideas for just coming back to your content and not overthinking it, not overthinking it. There's no reason to overthink it. And so listen, I hope that you have found this episode helpful. And if you want to finally stop ghosting your audience for good, we have a brand new, super awesome resource that is sponsoring this episode. It's our brand new content starter kit, and it is packed full of over 200 caption starters, done for you social media post prompts, and so many awesome resources like 50 plus pages of templates so that you're always on top of your content and you know exactly what to say to stay consistent and get out of this content hamster wheel or worse, the opposite of that, <laughs> the cycle of, you know, kind of being consistent and then ghosting your audience and then being consistent again and then ghosting your audience. So we have been preparing this for over a year for you. You guys have been requesting this like crazy after our Black Friday promotion, especially last year. And I am so excited to finally make it available to you guys. You can check out um, how to join and check out our content starter kit in the link in the description below, or you can go to the content starter kit.com. That's the content starter kit.com to download your copy. You are not going to want to miss this. It is fantastic. And I'm so, so excited to deliver 90 days of done for you content ideas delivered right to your inbox. It's a PDF download with a ton of spreadsheets of, we have an entire playbook. It's 50 plus pages. It, there's like 75 social media post ideas specifically for particular social networks. We have content calendar templates. We have our content toolkit. There's just so many amazing resources. You're not going to want to miss out on that. As always, I have so enjoyed our time together. And if you enjoyed this episode, would you do me a favor and rate it over on Apple podcast and also forward it to a friend who might be struggling with ghosting his or her audience and they might need some content ideas. So just get back in the game. I would love you for that. And again, thank you so much for listening. As always, we're rooting for you. You have incredible God given gifts that matter that people People need. And so we're rooting for you to continue stepping in faith and putting your gifts out there through the power of business and entrepreneurship. We love you. We mean it. And we will catch you in the next episode. Un beso. Bye for now.